Hello, we are live. Hi, everyone. I'm Mitch. I'm Bella. And we're coming to you from San Francisco, California. Woo, woo, woo. Where today it is foggy and cold and only 62 yeah. degrees. Well, that's cool. Well, I mean, you know, it seems colder because it's breezy and it's really foggy and overcast. It is it's, autumn. It's been foggy and overcast for days. But October is usually San Francisco's warmish month, warmest month, and it's not been that way this, this year. Not this year at all, no. So uh, let's see, what was I going to say about that? Oh, well, just so you want to know, we always like to check the weather in Brentwood where we're going to be moving early next year. And here it's only 62 in San Francisco, and it's like we said, it's all foggy and overcast. In Brentwood, it is 82, and it is sunny. I mean, no clouds, no fog, just sun, sun, sun. So that sounds really good. We're looking forward to being yeah. in a sunnier environment in the not-too-distant future. So we need to say hello to all of our guests. I'm looking over here at the monitor. Are you okay? Oh, yeah. Uh, and we've had quite an active chat. An hour before we actually went live at three o'clock. So let me say hello to everyone in the chat room really quickly. We have Susan from Rhubarb and Cottage here. Hi, Susan. And Sarah Gomez is here. Sarah is here all the way from Belgium. Whoa. Hi, oh Sarah. My. Great to have you. It is midnight in Belgium right now. So Sarah's up a little late. And Double ZZ Ranch is in the house. Hey, great to have you here. Terry from Madwood Barbecue is in the house. Our good friend Sunset is in the house, and Scent One One Thousand has joined us today. Woo -woo. Thank you all for coming to hang out with us. That is so awesome. Now I hope I didn't miss any names on the way through here. Let me go through here and be sure I didn't miss anybody. If I did, just know that we appreciate you being here, and we're really glad you came to hang out with us this afternoon. We have a fun party mix to show mm -hmm. you. Woo -woo. And here it is. Let me give you a closer look. In fact, let me give you an even closer look. I'm going to walk around the counter while I say hello to Ski Girly in the house. Hey, Bobby Joe, great to see you. And the Brew Q is in the Ooh. house. Hey, Brew Q, so nice to have you with us today. Okay, I'm going to walk around the counter and I'm going to let you have a look at this even closer up to the camera. It's so fun and festive. It is so fun and festive. <laughs> okay, so let me see how close we can get this and still have the camera stay focused. How does that look? That's pretty good. Can you still see it? Okay, so as you can see here, this is our party mix. And we have a mix of uh, our base for this party mix is what I want to say is a mixture of cereal and nuts, which is a very familiar mix for many of you if you've been making party mixes for years like we have. But we've taken the traditional Chex party mix and we put a little different spin on it. We're seasoning our mix today with da, Uncle, da, 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 Steve. da, Uncle Steve. Now I've got that too close to the light. So we're using Uncle Steve Shake original recipe today for our seasoning, and we'll tell you more about that as this show unfolds. And in addition to the Chex mix that we've made and customized, we also have these adorable chocolate-dipped pretzels. Can, is that focused? I don't know. It's having a hard time. Uh, it's close enough. Anyway, we, these are very, very easy to do, and this elevates our party mix, I think, anyway, to a higher level. And then we've also added some lovely... Halloween candies like these little pumpkins and some candy corns. So as you can see, it's very festive, very party worthy. And it's yummy. And yes, mm. that's right. We've actually uh, first made a batch of this about two weeks ago when we were experimenting with different party mix recipes. And we came up with this combination. It takes a familiar traditional party mix and then kind of amps up the flavor by adding some sweet elements and then these custom chocolate dip pretzels, which are really, really easy to do. And we're gonna show you that this afternoon before this show is over. Those are super easy to do. I mean, these, I think these, you could just have these as an yeah. appetizer them by they're, themselves. They're pretty good. And these are actually, I think these are gift worthy. If you put a few of these in a lovely little container and took them as a hostess gift, if you're visiting someone else, I would certainly love it if someone brought me chocolate covered pretzels. So. That's the element that's going to bump things up a notch. And then, of course, we've added some more Halloween candy. And uh, with the exception of the chocolate, mm -hmm. we used these uh, candy corn style candies because they don't melt easily. And so that's a good choice for a party mix. And these dipping chocolates that we used, both the white and the dark chocolate, uh, don't 
remelt easily just at room temperature. So they're pretty stable as well. So this really makes for a great party mix that you can eat with your fingers and not have a huge, huge mess. And then what does get on your fingers is the buttery goodness from the cereal mixture. And you know, that's what fingers are for is licking, right? <laughs> so let's check in with the chat one more time. I wanna say hi to Nate who's in the house. Great to see you. C-Mac is in the house. Hey, C-Mac, great to have you here. Thank you so much for coming to hang out. And Jess is here. Hey, Jess, we hope you and Ralph are doing well where you are. Thanks for coming to hang out with us today. I want to give a really quick shout out and thank you to our good friend, Sunset. Oh. Uh, Sunset sent oh, yeah. us a lovely care package with some goodies for me because some of you know that I'm having a problem with sciatica right now in my left hip and leg. And so I'm having a hard time standing and walking. Sunset sent me some things to help with that because... They have some experience in the sciatica department. And Sunset also sent this really cute little rainbow toy for our kitty cats. And our girl cat went absolutely nuts she over loves it. it. Loves she it, loves has it. been playing with it nonstop since the package arrived and we opened it. She even loves the box. Yeah, the box she was enamored of uh, even before I got everything out of it. She loves a little toy. So anyway, thank you, Sunset, for that very thoughtful care package. I certainly do appreciate it. And the cat says thank you as well. She's, She's been loving it. crazy over her new toy. So thank you very much for doing that for us. Okay, so party mix is mm. on the menu. Hello. Mm. Now, let me, let me, let's have a little taste. We usually do the taste when we're all done. I want to taste it now. Oh, you know, it's here. I'm hungry. Mm. Mm. This is so good. You get the butteriness that you expect from a Chex party mix. Mm but there's also a little bump of extra flavor because we seasoned it with the Uncle Steve's Shake. Now this is the original recipe. You can get this from unclestevesshake.com just like we did and get it sent right to your front door. Now this video is not sponsored by Chex or Uncle Steve's or any other brand. We're just telling you the brands that we're using in case you wanna give them a try for yourself. This Uncle Steve's line, you've heard us gush over this many times. This is a really good line of seasonings. And we pretty much aren't, we don't really use anything else now except mm -hmm. Uncle Steve's. He has several different flavors and we've enjoyed all of them. This original is also really lovely. And that's what we'll be using today to season our party mix. So let's see what we've got going on here. We're gonna have to get this party mix going. So the first thing I wanna do is preheat the oven and we're gonna preheat the June countertop oven today to 250 degrees. So it won't take long to come up to temperature. Now, if you don't have a June countertop oven, you can bake this in a conventional wall oven. You can bake this in a toaster oven. Anything that you can heat to an even temperature of 250, you'll be good. Now, before we start, I'm going to run off the ingredients for the cereal and nut portion of the party mix itself. The, all the ingredients we're using today are listed in the description right below where you're watching this live stream. So you can copy and paste those right into your digital recipe book if you'd like to. But for those of you who wanna hear what we're doing today, uh, what we're going to do first is we're going to use three tablespoons of butter, one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, and two teaspoons of Uncle Steve's shake. Then we're also gonna use one cup each of three flavors of Chex. And today we have corn Chex, wheat Chex, and rice Chex. We're also gonna use a half a cup of cashews and a half a cup of peanuts. So that's gonna be the cereal nut base for our party mix. And that's the portion of the party mix that needs to be baked in the oven. So as you can see, while I was talking, Philip has prepared three tablespoons of butter in a small bowl. And now what are you going to do? Melt in the microwave. Okay, and take note that we just want to melt the butter. We don't want to cook the butter. So Philip is putting it in on a power of two. And we're going to just microwave it for how long at a time? I'm sorry, 30 seconds. Okay, we're doing 30 second intervals until we get it <laughs> melted down. Now our microwave oven is 1250 watts. So if your oven is less power than that, you may need to melt the butter at a higher temperature than power of two that we're using today. Okay, I'm looking over here at the screen. When you see me looking over this way, this is where our station is and our monitor is for those of you who are new. And so when you see me looking over this way, I'm just checking out the chat to make sure I acknowledge people as they come in because we always like to say hi to our guests and then see if there's any questions. If you need to draw our attention, 
when you're typing comments into the chat room, you can use the at symbol and then write at Mitch and Philip. And what that does is create a highlight over our channel name. And that stands out a little bit more than just the typography in the chat room. Of course, you can also put in lots of symbols like Ralph Jenkins has put in some ghosts and pumpkin emojis. Those are super cute. Thanks for doing that. So let's see. Now we've got the butter is melting in the microwave. We'll check it when it gets to the end of this time frame and see how it looks. Thank you, Sunset, for reminding everyone that if you're enjoying the show today, we sure would appreciate it if you would give us a thumbs up. And if you're new to our channel and you like what you see, we hope you'll consider clicking the subscribe button. And when you click the bell symbol right next to it, what will happen is in the future, you'll get a notification whenever we have a live stream, which is usually every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Pacific time. We also have live streams other times, like last week, we, or earlier this week, actually, because Sunday is this week, we did one on Sunday night, and that was super fun. So as you can see, Philip got the butter all nice and melty melty. And that's all it takes. You know, if you prefer not to use a microwave oven or you don't have a microwave oven, you can melt the butter in a pan on the stove. That'll work just fine. Mm -hmm. But remember, you don't need to cook it. You just need to get it melted. Okay, that little sound that you just heard is the June oven telling us that it's already up to temperature. It doesn't take long for the oven to heat up. So now Philip's going to add the tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce to the melted butter. Thank you, Jess. Jess says, love the aprons. We are really enjoying our new aprons. We've had aprons before with our logo, but when we changed our channel name a year ago, we didn't have a new logo yet until just recently I came up with this one and we decided we liked it well enough to print it on some swag. So if you'd like to get some Mitch and Phillips swag for yourself, on the main page of our YouTube channel, there is a button that says store and it will take you right to our customized girl online store where you can order aprons, t-shirts, hats, beer mugs, all kinds of goodies with our logo on it. So we'd sure appreciate it if you check that out. Thank you so much. Now, as you saw while I was talking, Philip put the Worcestershire and the Uncle Steve shake into the melted butter, and now he's just whisking all of those mm, ingredients okay. together. Janine yes. Johnson has joined us in the chat room. Hi, Janine, all the way from Southern California. Thank you so much for being here today. We sure appreciate you joining us. Lovely to see you. The original Chex Party Mix came out in 1953, and it was published on the boxes of Chex. Ralph is right, and you know what? Not much has changed in 70 years because the Chex Party Mix recipe is right here on this box of corn Chex. Now, we're not using the original recipe. It's close, but not quite the original recipe, so we'll tell you more about that. We're going to use one cup each of Chex. Now, we're making a smaller batch than what the original Chex mix asks for. You can double, triple, quadruple this recipe to make as much party mix as you expect to need, depending on the size of your function and how many guests you plan to have. So we've got a cup of the rice. Philip's going to get us a cup of the corn Chex. Yes, you could most definitely use a small cast iron pan scent wine 1000 to melt the butter. You can use, uh, you know, basically any method that you prefer to get the butter melted. Yeah. Okay, so there's the corn checks. And now we just need the wheat checks. Yeah. So we already have this lovely sample bowl made here. So we'll probably be snacking on this while we oh, make wow. this next batch as well. This party mix has not lasted very long. This is the third batch that we've made in the last two weeks, and it usually only lasts a day or two around here. Between Philip and I and our other housemates, everyone seems to really enjoy this, and it disappears quite quickly. So we have three total cups of cereal, one cup each of corn, rice, and wheat checks. Okay, so that's it for the cereal portion. Now we're just going to go next. Jules Gilpin has joined us in the house. Hey, Jules, great to have you here this afternoon. Thank you so much for coming to hang out with us. We are making uh, what we're referring to as an elevated Halloween version party mix. It's an elevated version of Chex Mix. We've tweaked the ingredients slightly. Now, right now, Philip is going to add a half a cup of peanuts. And let me tell you exactly. We just got, these are called salted cocktail peanuts. They're from Planters. This is something we often have in the cabinet. So I tried to 
whole ingredients that came right here out of the pantry rather than specialty things that we had to go shopping for. We also usually have cashews on hand, so we're also going to add a half a cup of cashews. My apologies for not having that already pre-opened for you. Usually we always make sure everything's opened in advance so we don't have to go through this ripping the foil off the lid and stuff like that. How about if I take that off? All right. Okay, so Philip's gonna measure out a half a cup of cashews. Well, thereabouts. Somewhere around. Now, of course, if you like more nuts in your party mix, you can add as many nuts and as many different kinds of nuts as you'd prefer. That's the beauty of a party mix like this, is you can tweak the ingredients to suit your personal taste. I remember as a kid, they used to put mixed nuts in it. I like the Brazil nuts because they're really big. Well, you can, you, we could do that here. You could, if you have a nut allergy, you could just leave the nuts out entirely. And of course, if you have some other nuts besides these, you know, macadamia nuts would taste amazing in this. Okay. Okay, so now we've got this mixed together. I want to say hi really quickly to Michelle from Michelle's Cozy Home. Great to have you here, Michelle. So nice to see you. I'm at Her Halloween projects this year have been spot on. Lovely work, my dear. Okay, so now you can see Philip's got the cereal and the nuts stirred together and now he's going to pour the butter Worcestershire and Uncle Steve shake sauce mixture over the top of the cereal. Smell this lovely goodness here. Yes that's that's one of my personal pet peeves is uh, when people mix things in a bowl and then pour the ingredients out but le leave the mixture all stuck to the sides of the bowl. I mean, if the recipe is calling for those ingredients, we want to use everything. So like Philip is carefully scraping out the bowl here, that's, like that's what we want to see happening. Now you want to hang on to that yeah, spatula just, and I will take, take that bowl. bowl out of your way. Okay, take this too. okay, we don't need this anymore. But we will need the spatula again because when you bake this, the total bake time is an hour, but it needs to be stirred every 15 minutes. So we're going to keep this heat proof spatula around once Philip is done mixing the cereal and nuts with the butter sauce. So we can use that same spatula to stir things around. And you can go ahead and get in there with your fingers if you want to. All that means is you'll have to lick the butter off your fingers or else wash your hands. I wash my hands first. He did. Okay, I think uh, that's as good as it's gonna get. Well, scent one is saying that they think roasting the nuts would add an addition of flavor. Ooh. And that would be a good idea, but it's really not necessary here because we're going to bake this for an hour. So the nuts are going to develop a roasted flavor during that bake time. So okay. pre-roasting the nuts would basically be overdoing it as far as this recipe goes. Okay, so what you can see we have here is a baking pan. You can use, we're using a baking pan that fits the June oven perfectly, but you can use any baking pan that you want. And we've simply lined it with a sheet of parchment so the cereal doesn't scorch or burn when it's against the pan. And again, straight the bowl, get all my goodness. Yes, you want to get all that butter sauce goodness out of your mixing bowl. We don't want to waste any of that. Hey, our neighbor is here, kitchen, uh, excuse me, Karen from In the Kitchen with Karen is here. And she is our neighbor to be because she lives in Brentwood herself. And we're going to be just a couple of miles from her house and we can't wait to get to our new house in Brentwood. So Karen could come over and hang out with us and cook. And Karen had told us that uh, this weekend she was catering a dinner. And it's like, who wouldn't want to be a guest at a dinner that Karen caters? Because if you've seen In the Kitchen with Karen channel, and I'm sure you have, uh, she makes beautiful, beautiful food. So I would love to be a guest at that dinner party. Thank you for joining us today, Karen. It's okay. always a pleasure to have you here. Okay. All spread out. All spread out. Nice and evenly. So now this is going to pop in the oven. The oven is already preheated to 250 degrees. And like I mentioned before, the total bake time is an hour. So I'm going to set a timer for an hour. But I'm also going to set another timer for 15 minutes so we can be sure well it's got a timer actually the oven's got a timer on it yeah. so philip set the, <laughs> philip set the june oven timer for 15 minutes because every 15 minutes we're going to have to take the mixture out and give it a good stir so things bake nice and evenly so i'm going to put this bowl aside 
and grab this little tray of goodies. How's that doing? Now, we are going to make a mocktail today, but right now, I'm just drinking ginger beer, and Philip is drinking seltzer with lime juice mixed in. Lime in. Okay, we are going to make that elusive cinnamon hot chocolate that we've been talking about for the last three weeks. In our last cookie episodes, we kept running out of time. And so today, even if we run out of time, we're just going to go over time, and we'll definitely make that hot chocolate. It's so easy, and it's so yummy, and I want to show you guys how to do it. So uh, we'll, let's see, just just popped in for a second, and they're popping back out. So thanks for popping in. We really appreciate seeing you guys tonight. Thanks for joining us. Okay, so now the next thing that we need to do is create these lovely chocolate. Let me see if I can hold these up even closer. These chocolate dip pretzels. This is supremely, supremely easy to do. And what we're going to do is use some melting chocolates. And I also have these pretzels. Let me take these out of here. I, the bag rich, so I put it in a Ziploc bag so it wouldn't get stale. I want you to see what this bag is, though, so you can see the type of pretzels that we got. These are called Snaps pretzels. I don't know why, but they're, they're from Snyder brand, and these are this lovely sort of square, I'm going to call this like a grid shape. Crosshatch. It's crosshatch. That'll work. So those are the pretzels that we're using today. You can, of course, use just about any kind of pretzels you want. What I liked about these, though, is that they take the chocolate really well, and they're easy to hold on to. We're, we're intentionally not dipping the entire pretzel in chocolate, so it's easier for us to work with it while we're decorating it, and it's also easier for guests. You can pick things up by the pretzel rather than by the chocolate. So that's why we're using these square pretzels today, but if you're not a fan of this shape of pretzel, you can use any kind of mini pretzel that you like. There, so we've got pretzels, we've got chocolate wafers. These melt really easily in the microwave. You can also melt these on a Bon Marie. So you use a double boiler with some water in the bottom and you put the chocolate in the top. Just remember, like when we did the butter earlier, no matter what way you melt these, you just want to melt them. You don't want to cook them because if you overheat this product, it will never come back into temper. And so basically you'll wind up with white chocolate or dark chocolate frosting, but the chocolate will never set up again. So that's what we're using. This particular brand is Ghirardelli from right here in San Francisco. Uh, what, one of the things I want to suggest is that you make sure when you look at the ingredients on the back of the label that this particular product, because it's white chocolate, there actually is no chocolate content at all. It's basically sugar and oil. That works okay for me. Now this one, the dark chocolate, actually has sugar, oil, and cocoa. So this does actually have chocolate in it. The good thing about these is it's um, it's hard to mess it up unless, like I said, unless you really, really overheat it. So what we're going to do first is we need to get a little bit of chocolate melted. And I have some left from the other day when we made the sample mix that we have right out here. So I'm just going to bust this up a little bit. There we go. And then we're going to add some more wafers to this bowl. And I'm just... We'll just go with all of that for now. So we're going to make some white chocolate first, and we'll do a few pretzels with that, and then we'll mix up, or excuse me, melt up some dark chocolate. We want to just do one at a time because the chocolates will start to set the minute that you take them out of the oven, and so we want to dip them as quickly as we can before the chocolate starts to stiffen up again. Though we can certainly remelt it. And then we have some other small bowls that Philip's getting out right now. And what those are going to be for are our various and assorted sprinkles. We have lots of different ones. Today we're using primarily non pareis If you're not familiar with non pareis they're little tiny sugar balls. And like you can see here, they come in a variety of colors. We have a black and orange mix. We have these lime green ones. We have some plain orange ones. Purple one. We have purple. We also have this metallic silver, which is really cool. That I wasn't planning on using no. for this. Uh, we also have, let me show you these. These are some small sugar eyeballs. Yeah, we need those. Oh, we We're going to take the pumpkins out. We have some small sugar eyeballs. We're going to use these on some of the pretzels as well. So let me put some of these in there. 
Now, Philip is opening a bottle of this mixture of sprinkles, and it has some jimmies, which are the long sort of capsule-shaped sugar pieces, and there's also some dragees, which are round balls of sugar. Those are hard as rocks, and so they're really meant to melt in your mouth rather than be chewed, so I'm not a big fan of that. But one of the elements of this particular mix that I really like, and I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to see this from way back here, but uh, there it is. You can see on this one, there's a little tiny orange pumpkin right here. They're kind of like a sweet tart, if you're familiar with what sweet tarts are like. And so we're just picking the orange pumpkins out of this mix, and we're just gonna use just the orange pumpkins for these chocolate dipped pretzels. Okay, so we've got da -da -da -da, the white chocolate in a bowl. It's gonna be time to put this in the microwave and melt it. Cooking with Stephen and Jacqueline are in the house. Hey, Stephen and Jacqueline, great to have you here. Thanks for coming to join us today. We are just going to be putting the white chocolate in the microwave oven, and we're going to heat this in the microwave or melt this in the microwave at 50% power. I'm going to start out with 30 seconds, and then I'll do 15-second intervals. These do not just melt on their own by sitting in the oven, so it's deceptive when you take a look at this after they've been in the microwave for a few minutes, they're gonna look pretty much the same as they already do. It isn't until you actually start stirring it that you'll see if they're melted or not. So you wanna be careful and not overdo it with the heat with this product. So let's go in here to the microwave. We're gonna turn the oven down to 50% power and give it 30 seconds. My experience with our oven and a small bowl of chocolate wafers like this is it takes about 60 to 75 seconds to heat it up, but I do it in shorter intervals because if you do the chocolate melting with just, you know, like a whole minute and 15 seconds all at once, some of the chocolate will get overheated or superheated and some of it won't get heated at all. And then you'll have very uneven consistency. So melting it more slowly is definitely beneficial for a good consistency of the dipping chocolate once it's actually melted. So let me check in on this and see how this did. Philip, tell us what you're up to right now. I'm just pouring out the different uh, sprinkles in various bowls and making some mixes of my own. To, you know, something to dip our chocolate in. Hooray. Okay, well, that wasn't long enough, so I'm going to go for another 30 seconds, and we'll check it after that. Let's check in with the chat really here. Oh, yes, I know. I agree with you. Susan from Rhubarb Ricotta saying the little pumpkins are really cute. I agree. They are really cute. It was worth getting that mix alone just for those cute little orange pumpkins. So Philip has just mixed some bright lime green non prize with some purple non prize So we love making our own custom mixes. That's what, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. That's what this particular mix was. It was just a bunch of different non prize from separate jars, and we just mixed them all together to create our own mixture. Okay, let's check on this chocolate and see how we're doing. It's starting to get there, but I think we still need a little more time. So I'm going to do 15 more seconds at 50% power. Mmm. The oven, oh, the June oven is doing a beautiful job of baking our cereal portion of our party mix, and it is starting to smell really, really good in here. Thus, if you've made Chuck's party mix before, you know that it has this very distinctive buttery aroma to it while it's baking and after it's finished. And for me, that's the thing that like takes me back to happy memories from the past. So, okay, so let's have a look in here and see if we finally got this melty melting. Now, this looks a little bit better. What are you looking for? Just checking. Okay. This is starting to get melted. I think we're doing pretty good. Okay, so that's looking better. This is what I mean by you have to stir it before you can see if it's actually getting melted. And it's tiny little more. Tiny little bit more. I want to be careful not to overdo it, but that's definitely a little bit too thick. So let's just go. We're going to go with another 15 seconds, and then we're going to call that done. Okay. Okay, we're at 50, 15, or excuse me, 50 percent power, and we're going to go for another 15 seconds, and hopefully that'll get us where we need to go, and we'll be ready to start dipping. Okay, oh, you've laid out these lovely. Thank you for doing that. Philip has prepared our sprinkle mixtures, 
and we've got everything ready to go. So as soon as this chocolate's ready, we are ready. Okay, let's give this a good stir and see how it looks there. That's better. That's better. Okay, there you can see it's nice and melty, melty. That's what we're looking for. And I like to just stir and stir and stir because when you microwave it to melt it, sometimes the temperature throughout the chocolate can be uneven. So the more that you stir it, the more even the temperature will become. And then you'll have a better result when you go to start dipping your pretzels. So that's pretty thick, but that's okay. Now, if you have chocolate that's just like way too thick, don't add water to it to thin it down. That will just make it seize up. If you need to thin your chocolate down, my suggestion is to just use a little bit of Crisco, vegetable shortening, just a tiny little bit, like half a teaspoon in a small amount of chocolate like this is definitely enough. And that will uh, thin down your chocolate consistency without making your chocolate seize up. So water and chocolate don't really go together. So there you have, that looks pretty good. That looks melty, melty enough. So we also have a pan prepared with another sheet of parchment paper because we're going to allow the pretzels to set on here and then let the chocolate set up. Now I've had people comment in the past, especially people with lots of experience in chocolate, that they don't like the idea of setting things on a flat surface when you dip in chocolate. They wanna set things on a rack. The problem with that is, as you can see with this consistency of dipping chocolate, it's not really liquidy enough to melt through. And the part of the equation I don't like about using a baking rack to let chocolate dip things dry on is it leaves a grid mark on the bottom of whatever you've dipped in the chocolate. Now, the flip side is when you do it and just set things on a flat pan, sometimes it'll create a foot around the bottom yeah. of where you dip things. Some chocolatiers and chefs think that's an undesirable outcome. Personally, I like it because exactly what Phil just said, more chocolate. Okay, there, there's nothing wrong with more chocolate. So I'm going to just suggest that for this purpose, let me show you one of the back of these. It's just smooth on the back. And I don't think this looks particularly sloppy at all. So I'm okay with it not, you know, having a little foot around the bottom of the pretzel. I think that's perfectly okay. So let me show you what to do with these. It's very, very easy. I want to make sure everyone can see this bowl because we have a lot of stuff sitting around here right now. I want to set this. I'm going to set this aside for now. We'll come back to this when we get the dark chocolate out. The dark chocolate, just so you know, we, we melt it the same way we did the white chocolate. Now let's bring up some of our lovely bowls of sprinkles that Philip fits for us. And just to let you see there's just a nice little dollop of non prize in the bottom of these bowls. And dipping these is really, really easy because we're not dipping the whole thing. So you don't have to do that procedure with two forks. And all I'm going to do is take this and dip this right in the chocolate diagonally. So on the bias, if you will. So then you're going to get that. Okay, so we've got basically about 50% of the pretzel covered with chocolate, but on a diagonal. And then the next thing I'm going to do, let's use some of this orange and black, is I'm just going to dip the face of the pretzel right into the nonpareils. And then voila. Now you could call that done, or Philip's going to embellish it a little further mm -hmm. by adding one of the pumpkins. orange pumpkins to the front of the pretzel right smack in the chocolate. So there you have it. That is how easy this is to do. So let's do a few more because we have lots of pretty colors to use here. So like I said, I'm just dipping. So the front of the pretzel is about 50% covered at an angle. And then we're gonna go in here. Let's use a different color now. Let's use these green and purple. Ooh, that's so pretty. That looks really festive. Yes, I I'm a... Okay, now we've got some of those sugar eyes and Philip's just gonna push those into place. Now you don't have to embellish these any further than the non prize. No. We're just doing this because we have these products available. Oh, there you hear the timer. That's the first 15 minute cycle on the party mix. So let me set these goodies aside just for a moment so Philip can bring the party mix out and we can stir this up. 
Now we were gonna we can use that one if you want to. If you'd rather have a flat one so you can flip it, I can get you that. But mm -hmm. basically, all we need to do is just stir this around and get it mixed up. And then we're gonna pop it right back into the oven. That's right. Just gotta stir it around a little bit and little spread bit. it out nice and evenly. Uh -huh. Okay. Oops. Thank you, Susan. Yes, Susan is commenting about two things, that melting chocolate is a tricky business. And you're right, it is. Uh, but she's also saying nice, even roasting. Yes, we're very fortunate to have a June oven because it does a beautiful job on roasting. Oh, there's a piece that fell. Okay, there we go. So now Philip's going to pop the cereal and nut mixture back in the oven for another 15-minute cycle. And then once that 15-minute cycle is finished, we're going to stir it and do the whole thing over again and then put it back in again. So we've got another 15 minutes on the timer. So we're on our second interval of baking here. So let's put this aside and let's get back to, we're gonna dip a few more of these pretzels while we have the chocolate melted. This chocolate is gonna start to harden back up as we speak. So I wanna go in here and get a few more of these dipped while we've got everything prepared. There we go. Oh, that's pretty. The green and the orange together looks lovely. Terry has joined us. Terry Eplin Klein. Hey, great to see you. Thank you so much for coming to hang out with us this afternoon. Always a pleasure to see your name come across the screen. Great to have you here. Simply Wendy, Live Love Bake is in the house. Hi, Wendy. Great to see you. Wendy is also one of our neighbors. She lives on the other side of the bay from where we are in San Francisco. So nice to have you here today. Thank you for coming to hang out. We are in the process of making Halloween party mix, which consists of a base of Czech cereals and some nuts. And we're also, right now, we're making some custom dipped, chocolate dipped pretzels in order to add to the party mix to elevate it a little bit from what you might expect a Chex party mix to be. And today we also changed the flavor profile of the Chex mix itself by using Uncle Steve Shake original flavor instead of the other herbs and spices that the Chex mix recipe on the box of cereal says to use. So Philip's gone ahead and started dipping some more pretzels while I'm busy babbling. So these are very easy to do, as you can see, and it doesn't take very long to make it happen. And as far as how many pretzels do you need to make for this amount of party mix that we're making, I'd say about three dozen is plenty, but you can make as many as you want. And of course, these could also just be served as a cute little snack or appetizer all by themselves. These are really yummy. And so if you don't, if you're not into making the party mix or you don't need a whole party mix and you just want to do some pretzels, this is also a great thing to have around. And these keep for several days once they've been dipped. Of course, they don't last for several days here at our house because we all tend to be very drawn towards anything with the sweet and salty element. And these pretzels definitely have that. So as you can see, Phillips continued with the dipping while I've continued talking. And he's adding some non prize to the front of the pretzels, as well as some sugar eyes and some pumpkin shapes that we got from another sprinkle mix. But you can just use the non prize or you can use Jimmy's or whatever kind of sprinkles you've got in your cabinet to make this happen. Just the more color, the better, so it looks yeah. nice and festive. Wendy says, sweet and salty doesn't last long in their house either. <laughs> yeah, we know, even if I have to put I have to put notes on things. Let me show you. We made these pretzels yesterday so we could have this sample mix ready. And I had to put a note, save for video, so no one else eats any. Because otherwise, if we wake up in the morning, things have disappeared. <laughs> That's how it is when you live with lots of people. Okay. This chocolate still looks pretty good. We've still got a few more of these we could probably dip while we're at it. Okay. So I'm just going to, like I said, just... Dip this in the chocolate about halfway, and we're doing it on an angle. You can dip them in straight on if you prefer that kind of a look. So I'm just taking, excuse me, I want to use the chocolate to show you this. I'm just taking this pretzel and I'm just dipping it in the chocolate so we get about half of the face. There we go. About half the face of the pretzel covered with chocolate. And then we can go in and I'm just going to dip it into the non-prize, and there you have it. That's ready to go. 
And these don't take very long to set up. You can speed up the setting time once you're done with your tray of dip pretzels by putting these in the refrigerator for half an hour, and that'll help the chocolate set up even faster than it will at room temperature. But these do not need to be refrigerated once you're all finished with them. They're fine in an airtight container. And like I said, they'll last for several days or even a week. Oops. Yes, <laughs> I'm just reading the chat over here. Where Susan is commenting about how they have to do the work before the food gets eaten. Yes, I know. So we always have to make sure we have beauty shots of everything for our thumbnail for, for YouTube as well as pictures for Instagram. So we always have to make up a beauty bowl ahead of time. We usually wind up making everything at least two or three times when we do a new recipe, just so we make sure that we've got the logistics of it all down before we do a live with it, as well as that we need to take pictures so we can post things on social media. So Philip's continuing to do some dipping with the chocolate and the non pareils and we're developing a nice, lovely tray of chocolate dip pretzels here. Those look great. Now, you can see some of them Philip put one eyeball, some of them he put two. You can put as many or as few eyeballs as you like, or you can leave the lot eyeball portion out of the equation. We're doing it because we think these look cute. Okay, that looks really awesome. You wanna do a few more until we run out of chocolate, or we don't yeah. have to use it all. No. One. Okay, you, we'll do one more. Terry says, I like the lights under the counter behind you. Well, thank you for noticing. We actually do have under cabinet lighting here, but it's very bright white. And we found when we turn those on during the live stream that the camera wants to focus on the back of the room rather than what's going on up here at the front of the room. Yeah. And so we employed some LED lights that change colors with the remote control. And they're actually sitting on the countertop, shining up from behind the different elements on the back counter. And we really like these lights because we, with the remote control, we can change them to any color we want. Right now we're doing green, but we've done lots of other colors too. So thank you for noticing those details, Terry. We appreciate that. Okay, so we've got several of these pretzels already prepared. And we're just going to set this aside for the moment. Let's keep this handy. We can do some dark chocolate ones if time allows. Okay. How long before? Eight minutes. Oh, we've got eight more minutes. Okay, so you know what we have time for now? Chocolate. We have time to make that hot chocolate. Can we just push these aside over there just for now? Okay, so we're going to go. If we have time, we'll do the dark chocolate. But just so you know, you handle the dark chocolate the same way as the white chocolate as far as the dipping goes and the decorating. And you can tart these up any way you want with any kind of sprinkles that you like. You don't have to use the things that we're using today. We picked these colors, orange, black, lime green, and purple, because that's Halloween Hi. colors at our house anyway. So the next thing I want to show you is what we're going to do for a mocktail. We've been planning to do this and we just keep running out of time, but today we're going to make time. So what I've got here is this lovely Black Cat Fiesta mug. Those of you who are familiar with our channel know that Philip and I collect Fiesta wear in. This is Philip's Black Cat mug. So thank you for letting us use this today. I bought this just for him because it was his favorite pattern. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make seven ounces of hot chocolate and I'm going to add two ounces of cinnamon tarani. And that's it, it's super easy to do. Now today I'm using these pods, they're like K-cup pods for a coffee maker. These have hot chocolate in them. You can get your hot chocolate for this drink any way that you prefer. So if you wanna heat real milk on the stove and flavor it with chocolate that way, you can certainly do that. I want this to be convenient and easy. So for me, that means a hot oh. chocolate pod and I'm gonna pop this into the coffee maker and put the mug in place over here. Oops. There we go. Okay, that's good. Now I can turn that down to seven ounces. Now we've got to wait for the coffee maker to come up to temperature. That only takes a few seconds. So as soon as that happens, we'll push the button and in the not too distant future, we're going to have instant hot chocolate. But like I said, if you're not a fan of these chocolate pods or you don't have a pod coffee maker, you can use any type of hot chocolate you want. 
But for this purpose, for this drink, it takes seven ounces of prepared hot chocolate and two ounces of cinnamon drawn. Okay. So I have a two ounce shot glass and we'll measure this out once it's time. We're just gonna wait for the coffee maker to come up. Now I also have heavy cream. This is heavy whipping cream in a can. And this is real cream. This is not an oil-based product. This is a cream-based product. And it fluffs up really, really nicely. So we're gonna definitely load up the top of our hot chocolate with this. And we're also gonna use some of the lovely sprinkles that Phillips prepared for us for the pretzels. We're gonna use some of those same sprinkles to decorate the whipped cream of the hot chocolate itself. Now, one thing I think I forgot to bring over here was straws. I don't want you to walk over there because there's cords. Just be careful you don't trip. There's cords all over the floor to accommodate the electrical needs for all the different, you know, the lights, the cameras, the computer, all kinds of good stuff. Hey, I see Diane is here. Air fryer recipes with Booger 500. Great to have you here, Diane. Thank you so much for coming to hang out with us today. We have the Chex Party Mix baking in the oven, and we tweaked this recipe a little bit. Diane will be happy to hear it. We're seasoning it with Uncle Steve's shake. Hello. We used the original recipe today. Da, da, da. That stuff tastes so delicious. And right now we're getting ready to make hot chocolate in the pod style coffee maker. So let me just push the go button here. There we go. So that'll just take a few seconds for that to happen. Let me check in. Oh, Hobo Nickel Barbecue Testing Laboratory is here. Hey, Hobo, great to have you here. Thanks for coming to hang out with us today. We sure do appreciate it. Okay, right now we can hear the chocolate is coming out. Uh, Sunset says that mug with exclamation points. Yeah. Totally agree with you. That and mug. you can get one for yourself. I got it from FiestaFactoryDirect.com. Um, these printed mugs are for our budget. They're a little on the expensive side, but if you wait, they mm. often have sales. Yeah. And if you buy enough merchandise, which we usually do, the shipping is also free. So that's how you can make it more affordable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Chocolate is ready. Okay, the chocolate is ready. So there you have it. The hot chocolate is ready. And now we're going to measure out two ounces of the Tarani. We're going to zhuzh it up. Lots of new things today that have to be opened. Yes, as Philip said, we're going to zhuzh this up. This cinnamon Tarani tastes absolutely delicious. If you like cinnamon liqueur, I love cinnamon liqueur. But since we're not drinking alcohol anymore, I had to find substitutions to get on and this definitely gives us the flavor of cinnamon liqueur without any alcohol so we added two ounces and we're just going to stir this in to the hot cocoa and i use like i said i use the pod coffee maker to make the hot cocoa but you can procure the hot cocoa any way that you prefer okay there's that now we're ready for the fun part uh -huh. I'm just going to spray this on here and we're going to be very, very generous with the whipped cream. Voila. Now, Philip's putting on a smattering of different non fries sometimes known as sprinkles. That looks really super festive. I may have to run around the camera and hold that up closer so people can see it. Uh, Thank you, Diane. Uh, Booger500 is noting that you can check out our Instagram, and there's a link in the chat. If you're not familiar with our Instagram, you can go check there. We post all kinds of pictures of the different things we make on our show. We post about things that are going to be coming up. We post about what's going on with our new house. So you can check all of that out. I'm going to walk around the other side of the counter right now so we can give you a little close-up of this. So we got to start sipping this before the, you'll notice that the whipped cream starts to melt into the hot chocolate. Yeah. So let me see if I can get this up here close enough. We've got just lots and lots of sprinkles on the top of the chocolate. There we go. Okay. I just wanted to make sure everyone got a look at that. And while I'm over here, let's hold these up so you can see these are the pretzels that we dipped earlier. And there is a picture of 
this bowl of party mix on our Instagram right now. And after we're done here today, we will post more pictures of this, including some close-ups. So those of you who love to look at things close up can get a really good look at what this party mix looks like close up because it's just as pretty close up as it is from far away. So now we've got straws and we can each take a sip of this lovely hot cocoa. Mmm. Ooh. Really good with that cinnamon element. Chocolate and cinnamon, yummy, yummy. Oh my gosh, that is so delicious. Whipped cream in it? Oh my goodness. I know. You can stir in the whipped cream if you want. It'll start melting in on its own, as you can see from the heat of the hot chocolate. Just push we'll definitely your straw the into it. There you go. Mm. So That's there good. is a super easy and super yummy treat. I think this is great for winter because oh, it's yeah. nice and warm and it goes not only with part, I mean, you could have it with party mix, but all the different cookies that we made the last three weeks, any of those cookies or all of them would go great with the hot chocolate drink like this. And it's warm heat wise. Also with the cinnamon, you, you warm flavor wise too. Absolutely. So yeah. Okay. There's a half hour mark. That means that it's time to stir the party mix once again. So there you can see it's starting to look more roasty toasty. So that just finished our second 15 minute interval. That's okay. That happens all the time. It'll pop out. Little makeup channel is in the house. Hey, little makeup channel. Great to see you. Thanks for coming to hang out with us today. We sure appreciate having you here. We're making a Halloween party mix. Our version our own version of a Chex party mix. We've added a few different ingredients, including seasoning it with Uncle Steve's shake. And Philip is just giving this a nice stir. We're gonna bake this for a total of an hour, but every 15 minutes, we're taking it out and stirring it around and putting it back in. That'll help get a nice even roast all over all the different pieces of cereal, as well as the cashews and peanuts that we added to this mix. So now Philip's gonna pop that. Be careful, sweetie. Okay, got it? Okay, we're gonna pop that back in the oven. Oh, Michelle, Michelle, I'm so happy to read that. Let me read you Michelle's message. Michelle from Michelle's Cozy Home says, she checked out the Fiesta Wear after she saw our unboxing and she purchased the skull plates oh. and she absolutely loves them. Now I'm, they have several different things with skull motifs, but they also knew for this year, have an actual plate that is the shape of a skull. And it has uh, an embossed design in it that sort of looks like uh, Day, Day of the Dead. Dead. That's what I was searching for. And there's also- Dia de los Muertos. You nailed it. There's also several different skull patterns that are actually printed, like how this kitty kitty print is on this. But I'm so happy to hear that you were inspired to go check out Fiesta Wear, Michelle, and get yourself some lovely dishes. I would love to see a picture of your table set with your skull plates on your Instagram. So hopefully you can make that happen. I would love to see what your table looks like. Okay, so I want another sip of this cocoa, and then it's going to be time to show how to put all these elements for the party mix together. Mmm. Oh my God, that is so delicious. I'm a big fan of cinnamon. I think if I had to say what my favorite spice was, I'd probably say cinnamon. Mm. But this cinnamon chocolate together, this cinnamon and chocolate in my book is a really, really yummy combination. And this is very satisfying. It's got a nice warming element from the cinnamon as well as the heat from the cocoa itself. But this is super, super yummy. I love this. Mmm. Okay, so let's push that aside for now. I'm gonna put this stuff over here just to keep it out of the way. Now, we've got this pretty bowl. Speaking of Fiesta, we have another lovely bowl. This is a Fiesta square rim bowl. These are actually, this shape is discontinued, but you can still find these on usadinnerware.com. And that's where we got them. I love the square shape. Okay. I love the square shape. I don't know why they discontinued yeah. it. Maybe, you know, well, they've introduced so many new shapes. You know, there's only so many things they can make at a time. So, okay. So now these pretzels that we just made earlier during this episode, these are going to have to set for a little while before they're ready to be introduced to the party mix. And we're getting closer to the end of our time frame, and we still have 
two more baking cycles on the party mix, the Czech portion of the party mix itself. But not to worry, because through the magic of television, look, it's already done. It's already ready already. So this is some of the party mix we made yesterday. And when we store this before we serve it, I keep the Chex mix and nuts portion of the party mix separate from the other ingredients. And we put it all together right before we're ready to serve it. So I'm just gonna pour, well, I guess I'm just gonna go for it and pour, pour all of this in here. Now this goes over here. Now Philip has also got a container that has some pretzels that we did yesterday. Before you do that, oh. I want to yeah. do one other thing. I mean, one of the things about the pretzels is, I like we did with this bowl, I, I like to, you can mix them into the mix, of course. I also like to layer a few on the top because I think it makes for a really pretty presentation. But before we add the pretzels, what we have here is, let me make sure I'm holding this up right. This is Brock's Autumn Mix. And these candies... You'll be familiar with these, I'm sure. These are pretty much standard Halloween fare. They have little pumpkins. And we have, of course, additional candy corn. And this mix also has chocolate corn. So the orange part tastes like regular candy corn. And the bottom part has actually got chocolate flavor. So what we want to do is add some of this to the mix. There used to be more variety in the elements. Well, now they've got three things because, yeah. you know, everything changes. But this is delicious, and it's if you like candy corn, this is a great addition. So what I want to do now is just basically stir all of this together yeah. and get... Well, it's a sample. It's a sample. <laughs> sampling. We're not allowed to sing because it'll create a copyright problem. People are like, oh, really? And it's like, yes, really. But less than nine seconds. Less, it's okay. No, it's not. It isn't? No, it's it's okay legally, but not according to the platform. They'll take our video down in a hot minute if there's any music mm -hmm. that we haven't licensed. So that includes singing. So there we go. We've added some of the autumn mix to the Czech party mix. And now Philip is going to layer on some of the pretzels that we made yesterday. I agree with you, Susan. Susan from Rhubarb and Cod is commenting that the square bowl is lovely. I totally agree with you. I bought these once they were discontinued. I bought at least one in every single color that they still had because I knew that this is something that we were definitely going to want. And my experience is once things get discontinued, they tend to sell out because collectors like us know they're not going to be available anymore and they want to grab and get stuff while the getting's good. So we've got these in several different colors, I'm pleased to report. Uh, Terry says, one day I need to send you pictures of my mom's Fiesta collection. She's had them for years. We would yeah. love to see that. Terry already sent us a lot of lovely pictures of dishes. And one thing we were able to identify its origin, but there were some other restaurant wear, the restaurant wear that you sent the pictures of with the red printing on the outside. I still have not been able to get to the bottom of exactly what line that's from. But one of these days, we'll find the answer to that. So, uh, yes, I agree. Simply Wendy says, yummy to the tummy. This is yeah. yummy. So as you can see, Philip layered on some of the pretzels. And I'm going to walk around again and hold this up closer to the camera so you guys can get a look at it. You did a beautiful job with that. I'm staring back at us. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> well, let me see if I can get this up here where you can see it better. There you go. How does that look? Yeah, that's not bad. Okay, so that's our finished party mix. Now, you can mix the pretzels into the party mix if you want. You don't have to layer them all on the top the way we did. We did that because I think, well, it makes it look really supremely festive. But, of course, you could also just mm -hmm. use these little pretzels and you could serve these on a tray by themselves without the party mix. And this would be a lovely treat as well. Okay, let me come back around here to the other side of the counter. Mm. Good. Okay, so there you have it, people. This is our sweet and savory Halloween party mix. Woo, 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 woo. Woo, 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 Party mix. This is so yummy. And if I do say so myself, I think this looks mighty pretty and very festive. And as you saw over the last hour, it's very easy to put together. And I love doing the chocolate dipping. I think that's the most fun part of this equation is dipping things in chocolate. We just love that. 
Thank you so much. Susan from Rhubarb and Cod says that gets a massive woohoo. It definitely does. This is yummy. I think the addition of the Uncle Steve's shake to the flavor profile of the party mix, meaning the cereal and nut portion of the party mix, is really super delicious. This adds just enough of a kick that you can taste it, but it's not overwhelming with heat. And then, of course, there's the sweet elements from the lovely Autumn Mix candy that we got. This mix uh, is sometimes hard to find. We wound up getting it at Target. So if you have a Target near you or a store that's similar to Target, that's where you might be able to procure this. We did find this online, but the price was jacked up like five times what these bags of candy should cost. Here in California, these bags of candy cost about four US dollars per bag. We've seen those, these online for $20 per bag. So try to find them at a big box store if you can. You'll be able to buy five bags for the cost of one online. Okay, so there we have it. Today, we showed you how to make this lovely party mix. We used Czech cereal as a base along with peanuts and cashews. And then we dipped these lovely square pretzels and chocolate and decorated them with sprinkles and non prize and little sugar eyeballs because, you know, it's Halloween. Yeah. And then we added the lovely Brock's mix. So all those things together make for a very festive mix, not only visually, but taste-wise, this is great because we've got a lot of savory element going on mm -hmm. thanks to the Uncle Steve shake and the butter and the Worcestershire sauce that's, that's on the cereal. Yeah. And then the Halloween candies themselves are sweet. And then there's a little sweetness that comes in from the white chocolate and the dark chocolate. Now, we didn't have time today to show you dipping in the dark chocolate, but that works the same way as the white chocolate. So you can use whichever one you want. I've noticed some people are probably going to ask, well, why didn't you use milk chocolate? Milk chocolate tends to melt a little easier afterwards. I found that the dark chocolate and the white chocolate are more stable at room temperature. So that's why we use these. And plus, you know, dark chocolate is better for you because it has more chocolate content if you will antioxidants antioxidants that's it okay so yes thank you so much sunset says classy and scary halloween you know we tend to go for cutesy halloween rather than gory halloween so that's kind of what we focused on this season for those of you who are new to our channel if you missed the last three weeks of our live stream we did uh, crinkle cookies that were orange flavored that were really lovely that we dipped in chocolate just like we dipped the pretzels in chocolate we also did monster cookies using oreos with royal icing and last week philip made these lovely gingerbread cookies yeah. that look like little gingerbread people and then we turned, them into mummies. we turned them into mummies with royal icing that was super fun to do so yes i, I agree with susan from rhubarb and cod who says Dark chocolate is practically, practically mm. health food. Hello. It is around here anyway, that's for sure. So, okay, oh, so um, there you have it. Lovely, sweet and savory party mix. This is so yummy. I want to eat one of these pretzels right now. Mmm. Okay. I really like, I really, really like chocolate dipped pretzels in general. Well, I think these taste really fun. There's a little sweetness from the chocolate and then, of course, the saltiness from the pretzel itself. That combination is so, so yummy. And the pretzels are so crisp. Mm-hmm. Good nice crunch. Very nice. Okay. So mm -hmm. that is what we've got for you today. Just a reminder, if you missed any portion of this show, you'll be able to watch this live on replay. The minute that we get done, forever. And if you would like to know all the different ingredients and the ratios, for this recipe everything is printed in the description right down below where you're watching this live stream so you can just copy and paste the ingredient list right to your recipe book and then you'll be ready to give this recipe a try and if you do make this party mix or something like it we'd certainly love to see it so be sure and tag us in your instagram post so we can check out what you've been making and how this recipe worked out for you now we still have uh, a batch in the oven we're going to continue to bake that once we're done with the show today, and then we're going to have another whole big batch of party mix Yay. to snack on. So we're going to have party mix to last us probably we have treats for days. And yeah, days. days and days. <laughs> so we are so lucky that all of you came to hang out with us this afternoon. We really appreciate it. And Diane, thank you so much for asking everyone to leave a thumbs up. We really appreciate that. 
If you're new here and you've enjoyed the show today, please consider hitting the subscribe button. And if you press that little bell symbol, you'll get a notice to your phone right before we have live streams, which are usually every Tuesday afternoon at 3 o'clock Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern, though we sometimes do live streams other times as well. Like Sunday night, we did one where we unboxed a big box full of new Fiesta Wear dishes. We love unboxing videos. And they're really easy to do, too. You just open a box and can be like Susan says, maybe you'll have enough party mix to last you until Halloween. Well, uh, not from this batch. Yeah. <laughs> and our, our, our pretzels are starting to run low because we're on our third batch of them. So this will probably be all gone long before Halloween, but we will definitely be making more. And speaking of Halloween, what are we making next week? Halloween crack! Halloween crack candy. Woohoo! This is a recipe that we've seen done many, many, many times. Most recently from Karen, in the kitchen with Karen, she made some Easter crack last year. And we made that recipe based on the way that she did it. And it's really delicious. And we've made a couple of tweaks to it. And we're going to do a Halloween version of that. And it uses saltine crackers and some caramel sauce and chocolate and then lots of other goodies that we're going to decorate the top with, including candy, M&Ms, chocolate yeah. chips, all kinds of good stuff. So... Hang on, because there is more Halloween to come. And then the following week, we're also going to show off a bunch of Halloween candy that's specific for Halloween. And then we're going to create a candy board with all of that candy. So that's going to be really fun because, you know, who doesn't like a candy board? If you, if you may recall, if you've been a long time viewer, we did a candy board last Valentine's Day. That was one of the most watched episodes that we've done this year. And it was really super fun to do, and it's also really easy to pull off. It's just about getting the right candy. And we'll show you all the candy we've collected and tell you exactly where we got it so you can replicate a candy board for yourself if you like. Okay, so for today, I'm Mitch. I'm Philip. Coming to you from San Francisco, California. California. Hello. And we're going to get out of here now because we've got to finish this other mm -hmm. batch that's in the oven. And then we've got to clean up all the mess we made today. And by that time that happens, it's going to be time for dinner. So thank you all for joining us today. Happy Halloween. We'll be back with you next Tuesday, if not sooner. We hope you enjoyed the show today as much as we enjoyed bringing it to you. Thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate having you, and we'll see you next time. Thank you all for joining us today. Bye. Bye. Happy Halloween. <laughs>